Hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and good morning. I would like to thank the event organizer for, and also APAC for giving me the opportunity to share our project here in Singapore. Um, yes, uh, my name is Davindran Dharmalingam. I'm currently employed as the portfolio manager at the Malaysian AIDS Council. I'm no doctor, no researcher, no physician, just an ordinary community health worker, yes. And I will really gladly like to share with you one of our successful project, which is the Differentiated HIV Services for Key Population, the new initiative by NGO in delivering HIV self-testing and other support services in Malaysia through the Germ Test website. Uh, I would like to declare that this, I do not have any conflict of interest or no whatsoever. Okay. And just a quick overview about my organization, the Malaysian AIDS Council was actually established in 1982, where it is actually an umbrella organization where we cater to the needs of the community in terms of providing uh, um, uh, advocacy, uh, stakeholder uh, engagement, and as well as a community help, I mean, uh, community organizations uh, capacity development. And why did the first JOM test came about? The first the word name Jom, Jom in Malay, it's called like, let's go. So it's like, let's get tested. So that is why the program name as Jom Test. Okay, so the first uh, reason why is because of stigma and discrimination due to internal and also external. There's been a perceived number of stigma and discrimination, not only at healthcare facilities, but as well as self-stigma as well. So basically uh, the self-testing has actually given an opportunity for those, um, for those population who wants to get themselves uh, tested and not feeling um, stigmatized. And secondly, is also reaching the unreachable. This is actually referring to the population who are at the rural area, who are actually not able to reach to the nearest facility to get themselves tested or even know their status. And thirdly, is also self-testing is an additional mode of testing compared to community-based testing and as well as facility-based testing. And this is the website, Jom Test. Yeah, so it's actually a virtual space. It's fully 100% uh, online-based uh, intervention. And at the moment, all, uh, all the HIV self-testing services is fully covered under the Malaysian AIDS Council. Yeah, so people can go in, they can register, they can order the test kit for free, and there's no delivery charges. Uh, this is actually the timeline. Uh, initially, in year 2020, it was developed as a pilot study in collaboration with Cherry of University of Malaya, Yale University, and as well as Le Foundation from Chiang Mai, Thailand, who were the web developer, and as well as MAC. And as you can see, in 2021, actually 16 uh, September 2020, it was the official launch. And 28 September, we did the dry run, and 6, to, uh, 6 November 2020, up to 31st October 2020, we did the pilot study. And... Uh, the study ended 31st October and from 1st November 2021 onwards, it was transitioned into a max program because we actually saw the demand and also the increase of, uh, of you know, um, the program, it actually works. And now this year, we are actually in the making of um, JOM test has the National HIV Self-Testing Program in partnership with the Ministry of Health. And along the way, in year uh, between September 2021 and April 2021, we also collaborated with Fine Diagnostic, where they have actually implemented their uh, hepatitis C self-testing study in, uh, in incorporate with this platform as well. And this is actually the number of registration. As you can see, the average is about 188 to 230. This is the timeline from November 2020 up to December 2022. Oh, what happened? Okay, uh, no idea. Actually, this is actually a, a data of new testers by year. So each year, we actually have about 40%, 40 to 48% of, of testers, new testers coming into the program and register into the program. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> okay, apologies, yeah. Um, all right, when it comes to the age group, we actually get, um, I'll just brief it out. Yeah, so when it comes to age group, we actually get less than, uh, the age group less than 30 who has actually enrolled into the program because the program generally, it was, it was open to all public um, and, and also nationwide. So it's not just in city areas, but it's also open to, to uh, rural areas as well. And those age group less than 30 has actually rated the most highest number of uh, population. And what happened? Oh. 
Oh, finally, some data. Okay. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, actually, the age group is here. So, yeah, this is actually the age group, total registered, total test kit sent out, and also to, uh, return of test kit. So, yeah, so in total, up to today, I mean, up to December 2020, we have, we have actually sent out more than 4,000 test kits nationwide, and 1,400 of them has actually returned back the test kit. And this is the summary of the data. As you can see, total, uh, we have actually tested 92 of them reactive and 71 of them actually linked to care all by themselves. And the lesson learned from the study, uh, basically it is more acceptable and also as feasible among the key population. It is developed to simplify, uh, we also have to sim uh, develop to simplify the pre-screening process because due to the study version of the website, we do have pre-test screening and also post-test screening. We have a lot of questions. So we want to simplify that. And also, we also um, we actually have to improve the linkage to care, where we have actually involved with all our community health workers. Uh, when, let's just say, the client tested reactive, they are actually linked to the community health workers directly. And of course, we also give an opportunity to open up more self-testing services, not just limited to self-testing. And this is the new flowchart of the Joom Test 2.0. As you can see, we only re when it comes to the register part, you don't have to include all your personal data. It is just a nickname, your phone number, email address, and you're good to go. And we do have online consent. And it's now the new version is only 15, 9 to 15 questions only, where we screen for sexual behavior, STI, substance use, and also HIV testing history. And prior to that, they can actually order test kit. And now we have three modes of order, on, uh, which is order online, self-collect at the NGOs, and also, if, let's just say, if they're already purchased in a store or online store, they can still take part in the program as well. And they just share the result with us online, and they can actually directly link to care. So for those who are tested reactive, we will actually get an alert, and they can also develop a referral slip where they can refer to the clinic or a hospital. For those non-reactive, they will refer to prevention measures, and for invalid, they can actually go for retests. And yeah, so this is actually the existing services and the current development, we are including SDI 101, linkage to ChemSex online intervention. We are also including risk assessment to analyze mental health uh, and also a list of psychosocial and service providers directory. So prior to uh, linking to the uh, uh, service provider, they also get a set of uh, their mental health screening assessment. So they don't have to do the uh, mental health assessment twice. Yeah. So... This is actually a screenshot of the new development. I'm just going to go run through <laughs> since my time is up. <laughs> and pre-screening, order test kit, self-collection, purchase, sharing HIV test kit, testing reactive. This is the generation of raffle slip and tested reactive and to reorder. And that's it. Thank you so much.